I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Fabrice Chang, CEO and co-founder of Quadrata. Fabrice, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. You're very welcome. Let's dive into the Web3 solutions, uh, all things DeFi with Quadrata. I'd love to kick off the conversation by just hearing from you, you know, what are the specific solutions you and your team have been developing um, and, and how are those fitting into the blockchain space? And then we'll dive into everything else. Yeah, absolutely. So I think if you think about uh, the blockchain space and the state of kind of, you know, uh, decentralized application as it is today, uh, you can quickly see that uh, we deal with users and users basically uh, are, are today only identified by a wallet address. And, you know, it has the great properties of, you know, full, being uh, uh, fully anonymous and, you know, uh, kind of what we like to say fair and in inclusive. On the other hand, uh, applications are lacking something critical uh, to build products, right? Like to build better products, build better catered products. So what we're trying to achieve is how do we basically enable the notion of identity, the notion of some sort of compliance and notion of reputations in a way that kind of take the best practices of what we are accustomed to in the Web2 space, but fit it into you know, the blockchain paradigm. Because, uh, and what, what I mean by paradigm is, um, uh, how do we ensure that you know, data privacy and data anonymity and user anonymity are not you know, being sacrificed? So in a, in a nutshell, bridging identity compliance and reputation in a privacy preserving way, such as uh, applications can have access to the information natively on chain and users can benefit from better product. Mm. Amazing. Great intro, Fabrice. And yeah, you're right. I feel like Web3 is opening a, a new door for um, you know, freedom, anonymity, uh, but it's n by no means perfect and it, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, but at the same time, Web2 logins and personal information is, is a complete mess as well because you have 500 different accounts with a password manager and none of them speak to each other and they're all uh, you know, a, a point of failure potentially for a hack and vulnerabilities. And we've already seen you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, and all of the major platforms have been compromised at one point or another, at losing people's personal information. Uh, so I'm really curious on how your team is tackling this in a way that makes it easy for the end users to control their personal information and, and not have it being compromised at the same time. Absolutely, I think that's really the core of what Quadrata is. We take the kind of the best of blockchain technology, which is that global and shared ledger. Uh, we, we, when you think about it, uh, a user, when they create an account or they you know, um, identify and have an identity and reputation, there's no reason why this reputation and this identity should be um, unique to each application, right? As an example, if I have a very good reputation as a customer on Amazon, I should have a good reputation on the same reputation as a customer on Airbnb. No, uh, my reputation is not necessarily tied to just one uh, applications. And today that's the reality of it. So when you look at blockchain technology and what this beautiful technology allows is as a user, you're right, I could have a single login, uh, which is my wallet account. It's beautiful. But if I could attach to that wallet account, uh, a notion of identity in a way to have you know some sort of reputation attached to it then every application built on public blockchain could query that could access it so it's kind of like a unique global identity a unique global reputation that could be curated by all applications built on blockchain and uh, would be unique and portable across applications so that's really kind of taking again uh, what we are used to uh, and what makes sense in Web2 space, but I think just the technology wasn't there to allow us to have these global um, ID reputations. And now with blockchain technology, we do have a means to um, to, to achieve that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I'm really looking forward to that. As somebody who does have 500 different logins that don't talk to each other, I'm right. looking forward to that one login. Um, and, and, and speaking of that, you know, how long has your team been working on this and where exactly is it at right now? So we have been um, uh, funded and we have uh, basically a um, uh, subsidies were subsidies of uh, a parent company called Spring Labs. And so we were originally self-funded by Spring Labs. Uh, the idea came out of Spring Labs probably like 14 months ago. And over, I would say, probably like 
nine months ago, we, we spun out of Spring Labs. Uh, so we've been working at it for like over a year now, I would say, you know, all, all things come back combined. Uh, what we are today is that, you know, we are uh, on a test net. Uh, so our technology is available. It's ready for being integrated by a lot of applications if they wanted to. We have deployed on uh, the test net Rinkeby and the deployed Mumbai for Polygon. Um, so any applications today built on those uh, uh, applications, those networks should easily with like a few lines of code um, integrate into the Quadata network and they could access basically attributes about a consumer passports. Hmm. Very cool. And I've seen in some iterations of uh, digital identities in the past um, that the, the logins are actually used as um, also as like NFTs or, you know, it's your wallet address, but it's also um, a website as well. Um, what's the extent of, you know, the, the identities within Quadrata? Yes. So just to set some context, I think, you know, the identity space have left a lot of uh, bones behind uh, us because a lot of people have tried and, and uh, it's a complex, I think, topic to tackle. Uh, I would say, you know, for instance, in 2018, all those identity players have tried to tackle the space, but probably trying to find a solutions to a problem that did not exist back then. Um, and today, the landscape is very different, and we see a lot of identity solutions coming out. I think it's the, the space is kind of prime to uh, uh, and require those type of informations to be able to create a new wave of applications. How we differ, I would say, compared to uh, those solutions is exactly that we. I uh, want to make sure that this identity is tied to your wallet. Uh, the wallet is actually the perfect single sign-on. There's no reason to create another login password or another source of login or identifiers. The wallet is the perfect one. Uh, now, it's how you attach information of KYC, of identity and reputation to that wallet that matters. And in our specific case, we are um, opting for a solution that is exactly that, an non-transferable NFT that gets attached to the wallet. The NFT uh, for two reasons. One, it's a standard that a lot of dev and a lot of people understand, right? Our NFT, for instance, can show up on OpenSea, uh, on MetaMask, once you mint your Quadrata passports. The second is um, there is this um, uh, very well fit properties of NFT that kind of represents could represent you no know, attestations about your identity, your reputations, that is just a perfect use. And the technological complexity of integrating with an NFT, a lot of dev from blockchain companies are very used to. Again, those uh, a lot of those functions are standard functions. You look at the min function, you look at the burn function, the read function, all those things are very, um, I would say, standardized today in the space as NFT grew. So it's a perfect kind of, uh, I would say, uh, 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 means for us to um, port identity and reputation on chain. Uh, and I think having that available on chain also have great properties such as you kind of leverage the uptime and the infrastructure of blockchain technology, meaning that if Quadrata kind of not the team is inactive for several months, that doesn't disrupt the system. Mm -hmm. And it opens the door again for a lot of more composability and interoperability between applications where you make that data available natively on chain and people can easily plug into it. Uh, when you have things on chain, the beauty is that people can access the information on chain and off chain. Uh, whereas like if you make that data available off chain, you kind of exclude all those DeFi applications that um, wanted to have access to that uh, applications or information they need on chain. Mm -hmm. Very cool, Fabrice. And you know, speaking of DeFi um, and, and just general logins, um, are you guys looking at potential first use cases of what kind of applications are going to be uh, integrated with Quadrata you know, upon the mainnet launch? Um, and right now, um, because, uh, you know, with wallets specifically and, and with KYC, there's often um, in the early stage crypto projects. But I feel like as a broader use case, digital identity will be used for all kind of social media platform, all of these different logins. Um, where are you guys starting? Absolutely. So I would say uh, without being too specific, there's a few categories of players that are very interested in a solution like Quarata. Um, you have, I think, in the DeFi space, they tend to be a little bit more uh, related to the compliance aspect of it. Uh, I think a lot of players are trying to attract a broader institutional capital into DeFi. And in general, when we talk with 
uh, financial institutions, one of the, I would say, one of the key blockers of them entering the space in size is how do we know that we are not commingling our funds with bad actors? So the compliance aspect of it is very important. With Quarata Passports, for instance, you can create a compliance aware lending protocols or compliance aware decks where you know that everyone in those liquidity pool have, for instance, have a Quarata Passports. And therefore you know that there's some sort of compliance check that have been performed uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, another type of use cases that we see is also coming from, as you said, not necessarily DeFi, but metaverse, right? You look at the metaverse, I think this, uh, the metaverse has been, you know, very, very hot topic over the last few years. And what has emerged from this is two things. One, uh, a lot of like play to earn experience, a lot of, you know, uh, ways for people to earn kind of financial incentive from uh, performing actions, you know, stepping or playing. And uh, these kind of have the properties of anytime you tie a financial incentive, a lot of company, a lot of people are trying to extract as much value from it. So they create like automated bots, you know, plenty of wallets that can like automate the actions to extract as much value. And this is something that is very real for metaverse applications. They need to be able to fight against that. And how do you fight against bots? One of the best and most effective way today is, for instance, using a Quarata Passports. If you ensure that all your participants who want to, for instance, play uh, and earn rewards have to own a passport, you know that they have a real person and you can have some civil resistance to your system to avoid the users from having multiple accounts. So that's the type of also uh, situations where uh, identity is very important. And I would say the third category is of uh, applications where it's very important is also you know, for um, NFT drops, similarly to what you saw in the other side uh, land cell, people are basically, uh, for the very high demand NFTs, you want to avoid, again, as much bots as much possible that can mm -hmm. scoop in the majority of the cell and therefore uh, having an identity solutions and a civil um, resistant technology could be very, very valuable for those projects. Definitely, I completely agree. And there's there's always players in the game trying to uh, take advantage however they can, whether it's making multiple wallets or pretending yeah. to be multiple people. Um, so that, that's definitely a great solution for that. Um, now, Fabrice, I have a question surrounding, you know, in, in Web2, if you have an account and, and you lose your password, you know, you can request it from the service provider and they'll, you know, fix your account for you. How would that work with, you know, more of a decentralized identity if you somehow lose access to your identity? Like, how would you be able to get it back? Right. So the KYC aspect, the verification of the identity is still performed by a centralized entity. It is not Quarata. We are not never seeing your information, but we are, you know, a, a solution that is plugged into reputable uh, identity providers that are in charge of collecting those informations and verifying it and, and, and storing it securely. Mm -hmm. So in the case of, you know, either a wallet hacked or wallet being stolen or a loss of private key or access to your wallet, there is a way to basically request the passports to be deleted uh, and, and your data to be deleted associated to that wallet. Uh, similarly to if you still own this wallet address, but somehow your private key has been leaked uh, online, uh, you have the possibility to yourself burn your passports and that burning passport is irreversible. And then the only way to attach again, a new password would be to re-KYC. So uh, the, the basically the, the uh, bad actors would need the access to PI information about yourself. Mm, okay, great to know, Fabrice. And you mentioned that you know you guys have been actually developing really quickly, and you're in the testnet phase right now. What are the main uh, objectives that need to be filled to get towards the main net and the, and the main launch? I think at that point, um, it's purely about you know uh, security of the protocols. We have had, um, you know, the, our product is, is working as intended and we are in the phase where we are, you know, uh, undergo undergoing security audits from external firms. We're in the process of doing heavy internal QA, penetration testing, other things. So it's really at that point, not as much feature missing, but really just making sure that we are launching with the best security properties around uh, our product and, um, uh, and being ready for minute is, is the only thing that matters today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, you know, you, you talked about some of the players and a lot of bones in the industry of in the last bull run, people trying to do decentralized identities and it just wasn't ready for that yet. Um, what, what do you see as the 
the reason that you know we're not already using you know instead of login with Google login with Facebook it is login with your decentralized identity how come at this point you know five years in, since the last bull run that's not the already the status quo for logging in I would say we we are halfway there right if you look at most applications you don't see as many applications, uh, decentralized applications that requires you to have a login password anymore. It's, hey, connect your wallet and you can access my applications. So I think we are already halfway there. Now, I think uh, that will continue, that permissionless you know, uh, system and, and realm will continue, but you're going to see more and more applications that's going to require users sometimes for specific action to identify yourself. And that is going to be, again, for instance, potentially through the Parata passports, and uh, the logging system for that is going to be the, exactly the same. You connect your wallet, and if you have a passport, we can access information about your passport. So again, mm -hmm. we are not trying to add an extra layer of identifications or processes around how to create accounts. We are piggybacking onto the wallet connections, which is amazing. And uh, we make the integrations to create information about a passport as, as simple as possible and attached to your wallet. That's the main reason why we opted for um, an NFT solution that could be linked to your wallet directly. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that. And you're right, simplicity and making, we don't want more steps. We want it easy yeah. and it should be easier than creating a username and password. Um, right. You know, so looking forward to seeing how that plays out. What is the best way for the viewers to follow along uh, on the path to the mainnet launch with Quadrata? Yes, so we have a Discord channel, we have uh, a Twitter account, uh, Quadrata Network, and you have my personal account in general. I tweet about everything, but uh, also all news related to Quadrata. And we are very responsive on, on Discord. Some people come in and ask about the progress and some features. Uh, always nice to hear uh, community feedback, so we welcome uh, people coming in and chatting with us at all times. Sounds great, Fabrice. I will leave those links in the description box below as well for the viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about all this uh, digital identity, passports. Um, looking forward to seeing the launch of the mainnet, and I will be following along. So let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.